Hello students, today we will be discussing about chapter 5 of your book Introductory Microeconomics that is Market Equilibrium. This chapter is in class 12th. Let us take a base from your chapters Demand and Supply. Under demand we studied about consumer behavior that is the various prices at which the consumer is willing to consume various quantities of a good. Similarly, supply was a producer oriented concept in which the producer expressed various quantities that he wishes to sell at various prices. In demand, nothing was sold or nothing was bought. Similarly, in supply, nothing was sold and nothing was bought. In this chapter, we will actually buy the goods and services. But goods and services cannot be bought at different prices. They should be bought at a single price. Now the problem arises, what should be that price? Because we have two conflicting personalities, a consumer and a producer. A consumer wishes to buy a good at the minimum price, but the producer wishes to sell it at the highest possible price. So what should be the price that should be acceptable to both consumer and producer? This price is known as equilibrium price. Let us discuss with a numerical example. So let us suppose that I have a demand schedule. The demand schedule is a tabular statement representing relationship between price and quantity demanded. So let us suppose the price is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The quantity demanded at these prices are 100, 90, 80, 70 and 60. Let us attach a supply schedule with the same schedule. So let us extend the schedule to incorporate the supply schedule. So I have quantity supplied as 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100. So now what will happen? Now we need to find out that price which is acceptable to both consumer and producer. At rupees 1, the consumer is willing to buy 100 units whereas the producer wishes to sell only 60 units. This is a case of excess demand or short supply. This will lead to a competition among buyers because they are willing to buy more and the producer is not ready to sell that quantity at rupee 1. This will lead to a competition among buyers and hence the market price of the commodity will increase. This will lead to some consumers exiting the market and hence quantity demanded will decrease to 90 units. Similarly, more producers will enter into the market or wish to sell more quantity because of higher profits at higher prices. Quantity supplied increases. Now at price 2, we find out that the quantity demanded is 90 units, but the quantity supplied is only 70 units. This again is a situation of excess demand, but less severe than the previous situation. So what will happen? This is again a case of excess demand which will lead to a competition among buyers. This will lead to some buyers exiting the market because prices will be increased and some producers wishing to sell more units because of higher profit motives. When price rises to 3 rupees, the consumers are willing to buy 80 units. Similarly, when price rises to 3 rupees, the producers are willing to sell 80 units. This is the ideal situation which we were looking for. At this price, the quantity demanded exactly equals quantity supplied and hence known as equilibrium. Equilibrium as you already know is a state of rest. State of rest means which invites no change in the further position of either consumer or producer. So at this point, there will be a market equilibrium. Now let's take the case if the price was 5 rupee. So if the price was 5 rupee, what would have happened is 
the quantity supplied is 100 units and the quantity demanded is 60 units. This is a case of excess supply in the market or short demand. When there is excess supply in the market, there is a competition among sellers. Imagine a market flooded with some goods and there are no customers to buy it. What will happen? The producers will fight with each other to sell those goods. Now, their fight would induce them to reduce the prices. By reduction of prices, the consumers are attracted towards the market and the quantity demanded increases. Similarly, due to lesser prices, some producers incur losses and tend to exit the market or decrease their quantity supplied. This will lead to quantity supplied being decreased from 100 to 90 units. Now at price 4, the quantity demanded is 70 units, whereas the quantity supplied is 90 units. This is again a situation of excess supply, but less severe than that at price 5. What will happen? There will be again a competition among sellers. And whenever there is a competition among sellers, the prices are decreased in the market. When prices are decreased, more consumers are attracted towards the market and they increase their quantity demanded. Similarly, producers incur loss and hence wish to sell lesser quantities. What happens here? We stop at a price of rupees 3. This is the price at which quantity demanded and quantity supplied is equal. So, prices other than 3 are the market prices which won't be stable. But the price 3 would be stable in the market. Hence, this is known as equilibrium price. So, equilibrium price is the price which is determined by the intersection of the demand and supply curves. Let's see it graphically. So, I have already drawn a graph for you. Let me find it. Yes, here we are. So, I have drawn a demand curve and a supply curve. The point where demand and supply curve intersect each other is known as the equilibrium point. Similarly, the quantity being demanded and supplied at this price is known as equilibrium quantity. So, in my given diagram, the quantity Q would be called as equilibrium quantity. EQ is short for equilibrium. Similarly, OP is the equilibrium price. This is the price at which quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal or demand and supply curve intersect each other. So, if there will be any price in the market which is lesser than OP, that is, let's suppose 1 or 2, assuming equilibrium price to be 3. This will lead to a situation of excess demand because whenever the price is less than the equilibrium price, it invites more buyers into the market and hence leads to a situation of excess demand. Although we have already studied that the situation of excess demand can never be in equilibrium. This is because there will be a competition among buyers to buy all the goods, but the sellers are not willing to match the buyer's plan. So now, when prices are increased, the quantity demanded get decreased. This is because of law of demand and hence there is an upward movement along the same demand curve. Similarly, when price is increased, quantity supply increases. This happens because of law of supply and there is upward movement along the same supply curve. This will continue until the equilibrium point E is reached again. Let's take the example of a price being more than the equilibrium price. So, suppose if the price was 5 or 4, what would have happened? The producers would have wanted to sell more goods, but the buyers or consumers won't match their plan because it is higher than the equilibrium price. This will lead to a situation of excess supply. And excess supply is a situation which invites a competition among sellers. Whenever sellers compete with each other, they tend to reduce the market price. This will motivate the consumers to buy more in the market and hence there will be a 
downward movement along the same demand curve. Similarly, lesser prices would yield lesser profits for the producers or some producers might incur losses. This will lead to lesser quantity supplied and hence there will be a downward movement along the same supply curve. So, moving ahead, we have already discussed what is the equilibrium price, what is the equilibrium quantity and what is the equilibrium point. We have also discussed cases of excess demand and excess supply. As we already discussed in our previous chapter that when demand increases, it shifts towards the right. When it decreases, it shifts towards the left. Similar thing happens with supply curve. When supply increases, it shifts towards the right and when it decreases, it shifts towards the left. So, seeing the demand curve, we see that the demand curve increases or demand increases when it is shifted rightwards. Whenever demand is shifted leftwards, it means demand has decreased. On the other hand, for supply, when supply shifts rightward, it means supply has increased and when supply shifts leftward, it means supply has decreased. So, there can be many cases to determine the market price or the equilibrium price in different situations. So, I have considered many situations and let us move forward and see them. The first case is change in demand. Now, what do you mean by change in demand? Change in demand means increase in demand or decrease in demand. So, I have made two cases for this. The first one is increase in demand. The second one is decrease in demand. To save your precious time, I have already made our basic diagrams. So, we will only discuss the changes that will happen when there is increase in demand. So, as already discussed, when demand increases, the curve shifts rightwards. So, I have my basic diagram here where demand curves and supply curves are intersecting each other at point E which is the equilibrium point where equilibrium price is OP and equilibrium quantity is OQ. Shifting my demand curve to the right will lead to the equilibrium point being established at point E1. This is where the new demand curve intersects the supply curve. Now, at this price, which is higher than the previous equilibrium price, the market is buying more than before. That is, the earlier quantity demanded and supplied was OQ units, but now it is OQ1, which is greater than OQ. Similarly, the market price of the commodity has also increased. Let us take an example. Suppose there is a restaurant in your area which serves a dish. Now, let us suppose that dish becomes popular and more people tend to buy it. What will happen? That restaurant will tend to increase the prices of that dish and even after that, there will be increase in the quantity that is being bought in the market. This will happen because more consumers are willing to buy that and hence it is a case of excess demand. So, what happens is basically when demand increases, it leads to a situation of excess demand and we know that whenever there is excess demand, there is a competition among buyers leading to increase in the prices. Moving ahead to my next case is decrease in demand. So, whenever there is a decrease in demand, the demand curve shifts leftward. Now, let us suppose the demand curve has shifted leftward from D to D2. This will intersect the supply curve at point E1, which is our new equilibrium point, where equilibrium price has decreased from OP to OP1 and equilibrium quantity has decreased from OQ to OQ1. Let us suppose that a dish is being served in a restaurant and now people are not preferring to buy it. What will happen? The demand for that dish will decrease, leading to the restaurant decreasing its prices and the quantity will decrease. Why does this happen? This happens because of the case of short demand or excess supply. Here the producer would want to sell more 
but he won't be able to sell it because the consumers are not preferring to buy that commodity. This will lead to decrease in the prices of that commodity. Moving on to the second category is change in supply. Now change refers to increase or decrease in supply. So let's discuss increase in supply. Whenever supply increases, the supply curve shifts rightwards. So I've made the new supply curve shifting from S to S1. This intersects the given demand curve at point E1, where equilibrium price decreases and equilibrium quantity increases. Why does this happen? So when supply increases, it leads to a situation of excess supply in the market. Now let's suppose in your market, many restaurants open up. So this will lead to a competition among them to sell their dishes. This would lead to pushing the prices lower than before. And hence the quantity demanded and supplied in the market will increase because consumers will buy more at lower prices and more sellers are willing to sell it because of the competition. Moving to my second part is decrease in supply. So what happens with decrease in supply? Under decrease in supply, the supply curve shifts leftwards. Now this leads to a situation of short supply or we can call it excess demand. So whenever there is excess demand, there is a competition among buyers and hence the price increases. Because the supply curve, the new supply curve intersects the demand curve at point E1, this is our new equilibrium point. The quantity demanded and supplied has decreased or the equilibrium quantity has decreased because of lesser availability of that good in the market. Now let's suppose many restaurants get closed down. What will happen? So the restaurant which will still be operating can charge higher prices but it cannot cater to the entire market because number of producers have decreased and hence quantity has decreased in this case. So till now we have studied about two cases that is change in demand and change in supply. Now let's take up both the cases. So now I have simultaneous change in demand and supply. Simultaneous change in demand and supply says that demand and supply move in same direction and at the same time. So the first case that I have taken is increase in demand and supply. Now there is increase in demand, there is also an increase in supply, but there could be three possibilities. Increase in demand can be greater than increase in supply. Similarly, increase in demand can be less than increase in supply. Similarly, increase in demand can be equal to increase in supply. Let's study these cases in detail. So in the first case, I have increase in demand being greater than increase in supply. So when I increase demand, there is a rightward shift in demand. This will lead to excess demand. Similarly, when I increase supply, there will be a rightward shift in supply. But because the increase in supply is less, I increase the supply by a lesser amount. So the shift in supply curve is lesser than the shift in demand curve. They intersect each other at this point, which is known as the equilibrium point or the new equilibrium point. By determining the price, we find out that the equilibrium price has increased. This has happened because the increase in demand has outrun the increase in supply. And whenever there is excess demand, the prices always increase because of competition among the buyers. By determining the quantity, we found out that the equilibrium quantity has increased from OQ to OQ1. Moving to my second case is increase in demand is less than increase in supply. In this case, I'll be increasing demand a little less than increase in supply. So let's shift our demand curve to the right to D1. Similarly, shifting our supply curve rightward from S to S1. 
will give us the intersection of the new demand and new supply curve at point E1 which is the new equilibrium point. This has reduced the prices because increase in supply has outrun increase in demand. Similarly, quantity has increased because of more buyers and more sellers in the market or more demand and more supply in the market because both the quantities are increasing hence quantity demanded and supplied has increased. Moving ahead, there is increase in demand equal to increase in supply. So when I increase demand and supply by an equal amount, this will lead me to a case where we will determine the new equilibrium point as E1 and the price would remain constant because it would not lead to excess demand or excess supply. As excess demand is a situation where demand exceeds supply, excess supply is a situation where supply exceeds demand but in this case demand has increased by an equal amount the increase in supply. Hence there is no excess demand, no excess supply therefore there is no change in price although the equilibrium quantity will increase. Moving ahead to the cases of decrease in demand and decrease in supply. What will happen when demand and supply both decrease at the same time? So there can be three possibilities again. Decrease in demand is greater than decrease in supply. Decrease in demand is less than decrease in supply and similarly decrease in demand is equal to decrease in supply. So when I have decrease in demand is greater than decrease in supply, so I will shift the demand curve to the left. I will also shift the supply curve to the left but by a lesser amount. So I have this S1. Now these demand and supply curves are intersecting at point E1. This will lead to reduction in prices and a reduction in the quantity demanded and supplied as well. Why has this happened? This has happened because the demand has decreased by a greater amount than the decrease in quantity supplied, sorry, by decrease in supply. So the effect of demand has outrun the effect of supply. So this has caused a situation of excess supply. Now you will wonder how is a situation, how this is a situation of excess supply. It is because the fall in demand is more and the fall in supply is less. That is the producer is still willing to sell more than what the consumers are willing to buy and hence prices will decrease. Moving ahead, I have decrease in demand less than decrease in supply. So now let us shift the demand curve leftward and the supply curve also leftward but the decrease in supply is more. These curves intersect at point E1 which is our new equilibrium point raising the equilibrium price from OP to OP1 and reducing the equilibrium quantity from OQ to OQ1. This has happened because there is short supply of the commodity in the market or excess demand in the market. Moving ahead, I have a case of decrease in demand being equal to decrease in supply. So a leftward shift in demand, a leftward shift in supply because the decrease in both demand and supply is equal, it is neither a case of excess demand nor a case of excess supply. These curves intersect at point E1 which is the new equilibrium point where equilibrium price remains the same but equilibrium quantity decreases from OQ to OQ1. Now let us discuss what is opposite change in demand and supply. In these cases, the demand and supply move in opposite directions. So the first is increase in demand and decrease in supply. Now there can be three possibilities. Either the increase in demand can be greater than decrease in supply or increase in demand can be less than decrease in supply or increase in demand can be equal to decrease in supply. Let us discuss these cases. 
So, the first case that I have is increase in demand is greater than decrease in supply. So, let us increase demand by a huge amount and decrease supply by a lesser amount. What will happen? So, there are two cases which are moving towards excess demand because the demand is increasing and supply is decreasing. This case will lead to a huge increase in the prices of the goods and quantity will increase because demand has outrun the supply effect because demand has increased and supply has decreased. This will be our new equilibrium point where demand and supply curves, new demand and new supply curves intersect each other. The next case is increase in demand is less than decrease in supply. So, we will shift the supply curve rightwards from D to D1. We will also decrease supply by a greater amount from S to S1. This would again lead to increase in prices because the equilibrium point is E1 where equilibrium price is more than OP. That is it has increased from OP to OP1. As regards to the quantity demanded and supplied, the quantity has decreased. This has happened because the supply effect has outrun the demand effect. Similarly, we have increase in demand equal to decrease in supply. So, increase in demand, the demand curve shifts rightward from D to D1. Decrease in supply, the supply curve shifts leftward from S to S1. So, the equilibrium point is E1 where quantity remains constant but equilibrium price increases. Moving on to my next three cases is decrease in demand and increase in supply where there can be three possibilities. The first being decrease in demand greater than increase in supply, then decrease in demand less than increase in supply and then decrease in demand being equal to increase in supply. Let us draw these diagrams. So, the first diagram says we have to decrease demand by a huge amount than the increase in supply. So, I will shift supply curve to the right from S to S1 making them intersect at point E1 where equilibrium price has decreased and equilibrium quantity has also decreased. Moving ahead, I have decrease in demand less than increase in supply. So, we will decrease demand by a lesser amount, we will increase supply by a huge amount. The new equilibrium point being established at point E1. The equilibrium price has decreased from OP to OP1 and equilibrium quantity has increased from OQ to OQ1. Moving on to my last case is decrease in demand being equal to increase in supply. So, they intersect at point E1 where equilibrium quantity is constant, but equilibrium price decreases from OP to OP1. So, I hope you were able to get through with these diagrams. Let us summarize. So, I started this chapter on a note that we will be discussing about at what price the quantity would be sold in the market. Because earlier we had discussed the willingness to buy and willingness to sell in demand and supply. So, in this chapter we were discussing about at what price would the market be expecting to sell that commodity. We also discussed various cases of changes in demand and supply affecting the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity in the market. I request you to please practice these diagrams and then study for your exams. I will see you in the next class. Till then, bye and take care.